it's Sean. And it's Bree. Welcome back to Paranormal Files Canada. And today it's our third episode. And it's a special show for us because it's the Toronto episode. In today's show, we're going to talk about Casa Loma, the Mackenzie House, and the Gladstone Hotel. First off, I would like to thank those of you who messaged us about the first and second episode. We received some great and positive feedback. We also have a few stories to share in a future episode from our listeners. How awesome is that? So diving right in, we're going to start talking about Casa Loma. Casa Loma was built from 1911 to 1914. In Spanish, it's known as Hill House. It was a residence for the financier Sir Henry Pellet, designed by E.J. Lennox, who also designed many other city landmarks. It's a Gothic Revival-style mansion and a garden in Midtown Toronto. Pellet would spend less than 10 years in the castle due to the Great Depression, leaving the castle in 1923. In the late 20s, Casa Loma was operated as a luxury hotel. In 1924, the city seized Castelloma for unpaid taxes, and the building was left vacant for years. In the 1930s, broadcasters spent the night in Castelloma to gather material for ghost stories. She then later broadcast to save Castelloma from demolition. Due to her broadcast, Castelloma was leased in 1937 as a tourist destination by the Kawinas Club of West Toronto, later renaming themselves Kawinas Club of Castelloma. The KCCL managed Castelloma for 74 years until 2011. 2011 to 2014, Castelloma was run by the city. In 2014 to present, Casaloma is run by Liberty Entertainment Group, which has transformed Casaloma into what it is today. So there's a, there's a couple of ghosts that seem to haunt uh, Casaloma as well. And uh, one that stands out the most is the lady in uh, white that roams the halls on the second floor. Uh, recently, she's been spotted in the basement. Um, she's believed to be the maid that used to work at Casa Loma around the time when I think it was like 60,000 people who died. Yeah, yeah. It was like an outbreak of the flu or something. Mm-hmm. And um, they also say there's like some mutters and sighs in the stables of some old crotchety man that I guess used to, maybe he worked there too. I think that kind of ties into another ghost that we're going to talk about in a second as well, because it kind of talks about another crotchety old guy that that lives there too. So I guess we'll find out that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's um, also uh, stories of Sir Henry Pallet, Pellet, who I guess he's the one who built the place, and he built it apparently for his wife, Larry Mary. Larry? <laughs> Larry. <laughs> Even then they were very liberal. no uh for mary um so uh, a camera was set up in lady mary's room she was the wife of sir henry pellet and um they were trying to monitor the activity that was going on in there because of all the claims that people have made right and uh it was one of those old school cameras that you put a tape inside and you have to you know shut it turn yeah the cord no off. tape no image yeah exactly so, yeah <laughs> and uh and then the second time they tried to record any activity they used a camera with a hard drive and after about 10 minutes it shut itself off yeah so the the first one with the tape in it they basically went back after a while and really went to check it to see what you know that the the camera had recorded and there is no tape and that tape has not been found to this day. Hmm. Yeah. That's funny. So, where did it go? Who took it? Was it Lady Mary? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a tunnel leading to the stables, and it's um, also known as one of the more, uh, I guess, ha- has more haunting experiences. Yeah, like it's more well known as like the... Look kind of the hub of hauntings there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, there, people have claimed that they felt their hair being pulled, Ouch. or that someone was grabbing them. Um, this, uh, I think, some of the ghosts have been captured mimicking a medium who uh, said something like, 
oh, he's a terrible person or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, like he, I, I think the the media was kind of like saying that whoever was haunting there was a terrible person and the ghost like mimicked the medium for saying that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty funny. So that's pretty crazy. Like, oh, well. There's also uh, movies that were filmed there. X-Men. X-Men was one of the movies mm. filmed there. Yeah, that was a good movie. So yeah, that's basically it about Castle Loma and, you know, it uh, has a lot of history and if you ever get to Toronto, you can always go and visit. It's open 24-7, really good in the the winter, really good in the summer. They always do a great job at putting on a great show for Halloween. They do a great Yeah, Halloween is good there. So definitely check it out. Check out their website. It's just great. It's Toronto. Go see it. Now on to the next one. We're going to talk about um, the Mackenzie House. Uh, That's also downtown Toronto. Um, The Mackenzie House was built in the 1830s. And it was the last residence for the Toronto's first mayor and leader of the 1837 rebellion. His name was William Lyon Mackenzie. Yeah. And then after that, in 1936, it was his uh, grandson... William Lyon King, Mackenzie King, he was the Prime Minister of Canada, mm-hmm. and he saved the house from being demolished, essentially, yeah. and uh, yeah. all the neighboring houses around him were all being demolished. Yeah. So, it's awesome. that's why it's uh, still there today. It's still there, and it's a landmark, and you can visit anytime you like. So, the Mackenzie House has been refuted as the most haunted house in Toronto. And one article that I have read, it's it literally said that it was possibly, no, I'm saying possibly, the most haunted house in Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so, with that being said, most common apparition that had been spotted at the Mackenzie House is Mackenzie and his wife. Um, well, that's probably... Because they live there, right? Yeah, you, you usually hear that most commonly. It's the people that are the first owners of the house, yeah. or, you know, somebody was murdered, or, you know, whatever. But anyways, not in this case. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the ghost that has been spotted has been described as a small, bald man in a wig and a frock coat. Like those wings they wore, like the George Washington ones. Yes, yeah. with all the curls and stuff. The white ones. Yeah, usually see like people in like courtroom dramas and stuff wearing them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so with that being said, Mackenzie is spotted on the third floor, usually in the bedroom. Um, there's also a woman that has been reported as well. She's got long hair. She's been spotted in the house. Um, I, I believe all over the place from what I hear. Um, so they really didn't state who she was. Um, except maybe like a maid or something like that. Amongst the footsteps and cold spots that always people talk about in the Mackenzie house, there is that antique printing press. You know, the, the one that's in the, uh, in the basement. In the basement, yeah. It started up all on its own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. that's crazy. Imagine being there and that happening. I think I probably would, like, I don't know, run out of the room or pee my pants or something. I don't know. <laughs> we can say what we want, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, so the printing press started up all on its own in the basement, and, and people have been, that's been reported by staff and visitors uh, as well. So, it's not just one time, it's been a few times. The ghosts have a fascination with the modern day things, like they like the plumbing. Mm <laughs> hmm. They like flushing the toilets and all that kind of stuff and turning on the taps and uh, that's been that's reported. Crazy. Yeah. And in the 1960s, there was an exorcism performed uh, hmm. at the uh, Mackenzie House by an Anglican archdeacon, John Frank, with reporter Aubrey Weiss. Um, hmm. Yeah, so that's kind of crazy. And... In the 1960s, the ownership of the house was transferred to a nonprofit organization to the city of Toronto. Hmm. So, and then on the 
official inventory when they transferred it over to the city of Toronto. It listed one ghost and it mm-hmm. says in brackets exercise <laughs> or exercise or whatever um i can never say that word properly um but yeah so and apparently it's one of two buildings that were sold that have a ghost listed on the inventory i think the gibraltar lighthouse that we talked about in our first episode oh, yeah. that was a ghost was also listed on the uh inventory of the lighthouse site mm-hmm. or when it was sold or something like that so yeah i found that pretty interesting yeah that's yeah. a fun fact yeah so yeah so we're gonna move on to the gladstone hotel and this one for me kind of has a little bit of like history because i used to kind of live in the area really because i would get off of work and i would get off the streetcar and um i would always hear the music in the gladstone hotel because they always had bands and stuff that would play there in like the lounge area i'd never been upstairs or anything like in the rooms or anything like that because i had always heard at that time that there was like um not uh it was like kind of grungy or whatever not in the bar itself but like in the rooms and stuff i don't know i've never been in there but that's what i've heard um but uh yeah it's basically located downtown toronto at queen and gladstone it was built in 1889 after named after the street that it's on basically or that's right beside it um, Queen and Gladstone. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think you're there a couple. Well, yeah, because you you came down to to visit me a couple of times down there, and mm-hmm. I'm sure we drove there or by there or seen it, but we never knew we'd be talking about it on a podcast yeah. down the yeah. down twenty years down the road. Yeah. Um, Apparently, it was a bill across from the Parkdale Railroad Station. Yeah, so there was like a big railroad station. Which is the station Grand there. Trunk. Of, yeah, yeah. Again, that Never, comes up to see how everything is connected. Yeah, everything's connected. And, and actually, when I was writing that piece, it was like, wow, all this stuff is kind of like all together. And it has a lot to do with railroads and, yeah. um, hmm. you know, all this stuff. I guess there was so much activity. Maybe that right? should be what our next podcast could be about. Yeah, haunted railroads. Railroads. Let us know if that's what you want to hear. Yep. Yeah. So, and with that being said, the the, um, the Gladstone Hotel was basically the uh, hotel for that railroad um, because there was a few railroad stations that went to this Parkdale um, hub, so to speak. Um, I think there was four or something like that. So there was a lot of activity there as well. Oh. So, and then also because of the it, C&E. Yeah, it um, provides visitors to the C&E. And, yeah, as I and a place to stay. Yeah, a place to stay. So, like, there was a lot of uses there for the Gladstone Hotel, and it was pretty cool. So yeah. now it's it's really been <clears throat> renovated. Um, they've done a lot of different things with it, and it's really become a hub for the arts. And um, it's, it's one of the oldest operating hotels in Toronto. Yeah, definitely. And there's a there's a restored. Uh, Victorian 1903 elevator that's one of the last hand operated elevators in Toronto huh. yeah so I, I think those are kind of creepy <laughs> <laughs> but anyways the original so owner Susanna pulled, like, yeah screen yeah across. the screen door across oh I think God. and then you like I don't know. <laughs> that'd be fun though you pull yourself up on a rope no just kidding like yeah uh, it's just really old <laughs> i'm sure you've seen it in movies at one point or another yeah. the original owner Susanna robinson uh was a widow that operated the hotel and lived there with her 13 children um and uh, apparently her husband children? yeah 13 oh children God, that's a lot. you're crazy right <laughs> so but apparently her husband died during the uh, uh the uh the uh war no not the war um when they were making the place oh yeah so i don't think he really got to sell the fruit of his labors after it was all done so the ghosts of the um gladstone hotel they're really you know what there really isn't too much about it um other than there is a piano playing ghost uh that has been reported um as well the ghosts have been reported uh, roaming the hallways there's uh, people have heard footsteps but it's not very active like there's not a lot of i know i think that's kind of (laughs) cool yeah 
yeah. it's so cool to like hear it and then be like oh. what is that yeah. um you know but then they have those those pianos that they can play on their own maybe it's one of those oh my god did i tell you my story about what happened with my piano no. <laughs> so we bought austin this piano keyboard yeah and uh we i had it covered up right and we were in bed yeah. and the thing was off i knew it was off and i think it was like four o'clock in the morning all Weird. of a sudden it started playing baba black sheep <laughs> four o'clock in the morning full blast full blast he jumps out of bed he runs over there and he unplugs it but i didn't know this at the time right yeah so when i got up in the morning i'm trying to figure out what's going on because he didn't tell me yet and i check and i see that the thing's unplugged i'm like oh my god piano just started playing on its own. I was oh freaked out. Oh my god. So then Imagine. I, then I finally get a out hold of my On the balcony. <laughs> I finally get a hold of my husband and he said and I said to him, <clears throat> So what happened with the piano this morning? He goes, Oh, bits jumping up on the piano. Her foot must have hit the on button <laughs> and as she stepped on the keyboard and started playing music and she darted off, I guess, because we only heard it play that, right? <laughs> oh my god. So that ghost was explained. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it would be funny for that. That was podcast. funny. That's funny. I thought that was a funny story. I was like really into it thinking like, oh my god, is there like a ghost in your house? So and then funny. I hear it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow well. you know what maybe that explains how some of these things happen yeah you never maybe know. <laughs> so if you hear it's your piano animals. going off yeah. you know it's your cat could be your cat walking across <laughs> it it could be hungry you never know freaking brat <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> so anyways, back, back to Back to to Gladstone Hotel, but yeah, yeah. so basically um that was that really, was really it. Like we were really activity. Yeah, it's not really a lot of activity, but there's a really good history behind it. So definitely go there and and experience some of the stuff that's there and you know, we always try to promote what we talk about um on the show, you know. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they'll reach out to us one day. Maybe we actually have uh, uh, something special, something that we haven't done before and we're doing now and hopefully going forward. We have a guest reporter that's coming on the show today and uh, yeah, he's going to be talking about the Canadian National Exhibition and just some of the hauntings Mm -hmm. that uh, have gone on there. Pretty cool stories. Welcome, Ed. Thank you, Sean, and thank you, Debris. Yes, the stories I want to speak about today are Ghosts of the CNE. I read online some information by Richard Palmisano, who's a paranormal investigator. Him and his team spent 13 months at the exhibition following up on and looking into the possibility of spirits or ghosts of the CNE. The first one I want to mention is Michael, who was an electrician. He died in 1924 doing his work at the CNE, and his spirit continues to guard the building, which is the service building, and... So how did Michael die? Like, what happened to him? Michael was electrocuted while he was doing his, uh, his working on, on power lines. And where a lot of people encounter Michael is when they have, they have an old elevator that's rarely used in the building. People that do need it or use it find they they start getting a very uneasy feeling and they hear the sound of like a like a noise like a like a wind blowing through and it's in the middle of the building there's no way it could be windy and that is uh that's what they picked up on when they did their investigation but michael has been in that area for almost a hundred years Wow, so lots of history at this place. I don't, and if you're not familiar, the CNE started the summer of 1879 and features rides, games, food, and a lot of different things that you can do there, even to this day. So, with that being said, um, this is why we thought it would be a good idea to talk about the CNE and uh, get some information on the ghosts that haunt the grounds. The second uh, person or spirit that I'd like to speak about is the night watchman and he worked for the CNE and he was in the general services building also. One evening he died, they found him dead from a 
a heart attack. Uh, his ghost continues to walk the halls and what he does, and people in the offices who end up staying late have actually encountered this. He, he checks the doorknobs to see if they're locked, and he also turns the lights off sometimes in the different uh, offices, and sometimes when people are actually working, the lights will go off. And that's, hmm. that was his job way back when he died. Wow. And he continues today to walk the hallway. And they hear him walking the hallways, too. They yeah. hear his, his yeah. footsteps. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Imagine being alone there. and, and Yeah, well, that's, that's usually when he, he, he does that. He usually comes when people are by themselves. Wow. And uh, he may turn the lights off or just check the doorknob to see if uh, the, light, the door is locked. Because that, that's what his job was. He was to lock up and turn the lights off if, if there was any lights left on. And he's still doing that to this day. Yeah. The other one that I'd like to speak to is a mother and daughter who we couldn't get a lot of information about. But when they were actually uh, investigated and uh, they, they were found out about, and people have seen them wearing what they wear, the mother wears a long dress with a large hat, similar to the styles of the 1800s, and the daughter is wearing the same type of clothes. Mainly with the mother, she just walks through the hallways with the daughter trailing, but the daughter, you always hear the daughter, and they'll hear her, her voice giggling and echoing in the, in the hallways, even, even when they're not visible. And where, where are these people located? And they're located also, all three of these uh, apparitions are take place in the General Services building. Ah, and is that building still accessible today? It is accessible, and actually if you take the ghost walk, they take you in there. Ah. So you can actually see the building and see some of these sites. So if you go to the CNE, go to the ghost walk. Yes. That's for sure. For sure. So I think the next one we're going to talk about is the Stanley Barracks. So you want to take a, take it away with that one? Yes. Stanley <laughs> Barracks was a barracks on the south side, which was connected to the original harbor there because the water came right up to the edge of the C&E. And there was a lot of historical significance of the Stanley Barracks because there was battles taking place there in the War of 1812. The people, many soldiers were killed. They kept prisoners there there was uh, and then they switched it over to public housing and, and a lot of different things went on there but the uh, one person I'd like to mention is a young girl by the name of Jenny who the, what was found out was that she apparently died she got, she choked on her scarf her scarf got caught and it choked her to death and you hear Jenny, and the Jenny is apparently looking for her cat walking the halls of Stanley Barracks oh. in the lower level. And her spirit constantly walks around there. And the, t the two most prominent ones that I'm going to mention today, their names, uh, they have found out, is, are Bob and David. These two spirits interact with the other spirits, but these ones are more have been considered more of a demonic nature because they disrupt and they're always trying to create problems for the other spirits and the other spirits when they got information on the other spirits of the barracks I guess uh, these two spirits um, constantly terrorize the other spirits in the building so they've been considered uh, more of a de demonic nature so they basically interact with them and, yeah. and with uh, the, the good Good ghosts, I guess. Yeah, if you will. yeah, the, the basic spirits, you know, wow. like 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 the young girl Jenny and and other people that have been as soldiers or some soldier spirits there, but they've concluded that these two, Dave, Bob, and David, are more in a demonic nature because what they do, they they don't um, blend well with the other ones. They're always creating problems for the other ones. Mm. So they're bullies, and, and they're kind of wreak they, havoc. They they consider <laughs> well, actually, when when the um, when the paranormal investigation went on, they they were viewed and they noticed they were dark spirits, where they'd be like a dark shade, or or they'd be like a mist, a dark mist, and uh, so that usually means they're not not good, so friendly. Uh, not so friendly. Yes. Well, that concludes the 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 summary of the ghost of the Canadian National Exhibition. So I wanted to take this time to say thanks to Ed for coming on the show and gathering that information. There was a lot of 
good things there. Um, and there's a lot of good information online as well if you wanted to look further into this information. So again, thanks, Ed, for coming on the show. We hope you come back soon. Thank you, Sean and Bree, and I will definitely come back and visit your show. So thank you so much for joining us for our third episode of Paranormal Files Canada. We look forward to hearing from you again. Absolutely. And uh, getting any of the stories that you guys have to share. Yes, so definitely share your stories. We love hearing them. Um, we definitely want to feature them um, on the show. So get them into us. Um, here are the ways that you can contact us. <laughs> You can reach out to us on Twitter at PFC Sean underscore Bree. Or you can reach us at Paranormal Files Canada at gmail.com. Yep, that's right. Um, always at our Facebook as well at Paranormal Files Canada. Um, you can, you know, submit your stories there and you can also get our podcasts there. And, uh, yeah, definitely tell your friends and uh, your family. And, tell mm -hmm. them that. and share our link. Yes. All right. Thanks so much. You guys have a great month. We'll see you next month in January. New Year. <laughs> Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year and Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.